By this point, you've probably heard at some time or another that sugar is bad or something about how eating sugar can cause diabetes. You've probably even heard of people around you who have been diagnosed with diabetes and then they have to watch their diets and maybe even take insulin. But what does it all mean and what is really happening? Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. I am so glad you are here to learn more about your health and how your body works. If you want to continue to learn more about your health, please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your support. Disclaimer, the doctor in my name comes from the PhD I earned. I'm not a medical doctor. My videos and content are for educational and informational purposes only. This is not to be used in lieu of medical advice, but to educate you. If you have a true medical emergency or issue, please see your physician. Welcome to part two of the pancreas, insulin, and diabetes. In part one, we talked about the role of the pancreas and the work of the hormones, insulin and glucagon, and how they help to maintain blood sugar. If you haven't checked out part one yet, please make sure you do. I've linked it in the description box below. In this video, we are going to talk about the differences between type one and type two diabetes. Why are they different? And how are they treated? The National Diabetes Statistics Report, which is available on the CDC website, indicates that 37.3 million people in the United States have diabetes. That is 11.2% of the United States population. Of that, 28.7 million people are diagnosed. 28.5 million of those are adults. And 8.5 million people are undiagnosed. In addition, 98 million people over the age of 18 in the United States have prediabetes. That is 38% of the adult U.S. population. These numbers are astounding. So what is diabetes? How is it treated? And how can it possibly be prevented? There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Both types of diabetes result in high blood sugar, but the reason for why is different for each. Type 1 diabetes involves a genetic component. This means that it is passed down from generation to generation. It can also involve an autoimmune response, which means that the body's immune system is attacking itself. In this specific response, the immune cells attack the pancreas. This type of diabetes is not preventable. However, it is less common than type 2 diabetes, affecting 5 to 10% of people who have diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas makes little to no insulin because of this attack on its cells. If there is no insulin in the body, then that means that the glucose from the food you eat cannot get to where it needs to go, which is into the cells of the body. This is very damaging to the body for the glucose to stay very high in the bloodstream. Without insulin, the body cannot utilize that glucose that you eat. And again, this is a very important concept that the glucose is able to be taken into the cells by insulin. It needs insulin to be taken into the cells. For more information on this, make sure that you see my part one video because I go into better detail on this. Again, I'm going to link it in the description box below. Because of this insulin interaction, type one diabetes also used to be referred to as insulin dependent diabetes, since those with type 1 diabetes need to take insulin. Type 1 diabetes is more common in children, teens, and young adults, but it can be diagnosed at any age. Type 2 diabetes does not have a genetic component, but instead arises from lifestyle choices. Obesity is on the rise, and with it, so is type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes affects 90 to 95% of Americans who have diabetes. Type 2 diabetes most often develops in people over the age of 45, 
but more and more children, teens, and young adults are also developing it. In type 2 diabetes, your cells don't respond normally to insulin. This is known as insulin resistance. In order to combat this, your pancreas makes even more insulin to try to get your cells to respond. With a poor diet that's high in carbs and sugars, this makes it difficult for the pancreas to keep up. Eventually, the pancreas can't keep up, which causes the blood sugar to rise. Remember, insulin is necessary for getting glucose to the cells where it is needed. This then sets the stage for prediabetes and eventually leads to type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetics do not need to take insulin since their bodies are still making some of it. Their cells are not being attacked like in type 1 diabetes. There are some medications that can help keep blood sugar low for those with type 2 diabetes. However, type 2 diabetes arises from this insulin resistance that results from a poor diet and lifestyle. Type 2 diabetes can be prevented and treated though. Things that can help to prevent type 2 diabetes is one, a balanced diet, keeping excess sugar, processed foods, high carbs out of the diet, and eating more fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. Exercise, maintaining body weight, staying active, these are important to preventing type 2 diabetes. Hand in hand with all those things, weight loss, losing weight is essential in keeping type 2 diabetes at bay and reducing that strain on the pancreas so that the pancreas does not have to work harder. Again, just to recap, in type 2 diabetes, the pancreas the cells of the pancreas are not being attacked like in type 1, so they do have the ability to make insulin. So type 2 diabetics, again, do not need to take insulin. The pancreas can make insulin, but by exercising, eating a balanced diet, losing weight, this can all help reduce that strain on the pancreas. And then um, the fourth way is to monitor blood glucose making sure to stay current on when the blood sugar fluctuates in the body, how certain foods can affect your blood sugar, how activity can affect your blood sugar, can help you to maintain a better diet and activity levels. Let's take a look at the take home message. First, both types of diabetes result in high blood sugar. Second, high blood sugar is bad because that means that glucose is not being taken out of the blood. Third, the cells require glucose to function. Without glucose, the cells will turn to breaking down fats to get the energy they need to do the work that they need to do. This breakdown of fats will lead to toxic acids that are known as ketones being released. This can result in nausea, abdominal pain, chest pain, and even coma. While we think breaking down some fat could be good, this is a secondary measure for the cell and doing this over long term is not good. Getting glucose is the primary source of energy for the cell and without it, it is just trying to survive. Eventually organs can shut down without the energy that it needs to survive. Fourth, type one diabetes usually occurs earlier in life and is due to genetics. It is not preventable, but it is treatable and those with type one diabetes need to take insulin. Fifth, type 2 diabetes occurs later in life, though we are seeing it earlier in life in many cases, but it is due to dietary and lifestyle habits. Type 2 diabetes can be completely preventable by making good lifestyle and eating choices. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that this video helped you to better understand the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them down in the comment box below. As always, if you like this video and enjoy my content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.